Hello, welcome to a Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and today I have another Dwarven Forge unboxing. This time, Reliquaries from their, uh, at this point, latest Kickstarter. And I have all the sculpts. In fact, I have a couple extra things that I will pull out and probably do a video on. Well, you just pull things over, open it up. What I'm pulling out here. What do we got? We got. Well, that one comes with it. Here. These should all be with it. Here. Okay. So I got two boxes, one of which is just. A duplicate of a piece in here and one of which I'll probably do a video in like the middle of next week to cover because um, it was not part of all the sculpts one two three four five six seven boxes one two three four five six seven boxes perfect <laughs> so, their thank you note has gotten much smaller. <laughs> Anyways, um, let me begin. I definitely remember the first set of theirs I saw. Uh, so let's begin with the Dwarven Trio Pledge. Uh, which, okay, so the way that this is broken down, technically you'll be able to see a whole lot of the different pledges, but I'm still going to do it all, one video for all the new stuff, at least sculpt-wise. I don't have the, um, like the wooden bases, but all the sculpts. So, we got a little mini here for scale as typical. Um, the idea with these is that they hold dice um, and that's not why I got them I don't I don't intend to display dice I mean I might display some since I have them um, but I intend to implement them into builds so this throne sort of griffin throne here and this is dwarven set uh, is beautiful. Um, this little metallic accents in the stonework. And then this next piece is the pillar. That's that box that I won't bother doing another video on because it's just another one of these. That's one of the things I ordered separate though. Is I ordered one of these because I thought it would look really cool to have this throne flanked by two of these pillars. Um, so the, the, the ram's head pillar. Just like observing here, like the detail that goes down into this little pit that you'll see what it's for here shortly. Um, means that you can just leave it empty. Just for height. <laughs> but yeah. And then we got our hero piece. This is the one that really, like, the, when they first started showing stuff off, it caught my attention. Here's the height compared to a mini, and I'm like, I need that in a build. Good, and it's charged. As you can see, this one has light. No light on the face. Even though when I turn it on, it looks like the face goes, it's because the light shines up. So whatever you have right here, you know, if you have something clear there, it will illuminate. And then it also shines out of the front of the face here. Also beautiful as is without the light turned on. Giant dwarf statue. And I'm like, that looks awesome. And this is a, it's a good sized piece. 
like a person is up to the base here and then just this giant statue like that's a good centerpiece of a dwarven town square And I will note, there's a little inch in the magnet. There's a port here to charge it because it has a rechargeable battery. All the big pieces in here do. Furthermore, we have in this set these. What are these? Well, each of the rail queries has a little hole there. And so like, I can put this here and make a flat base that a mini will sit on perfectly. So if you want to show off a mini, you have somewhere to set it. And you can put it, you know, here or like there or just, you know, wherever you want. There's just a little flat and it's it's got a little bit of a dish to it. But you know, a flat piece to set things on. And then you got these other four, which each in turn can be put in the top here. You have like a triangle and... Just all these different little shapes it's designed to hold dice. So whether that's like that, well, this feels like one kind of design for a D4. That one. Definitely hold the D8 or a D6. We have this one to hold a D10 or percentile or a D20. So basically you have different shapes to hold all the different dice and just uh, display them. And again, I don't intend to really display dice with them, but they're able to do that. And then we also have a hero charger, which I will show one of here. So in this box, we have... power cord to go USB a lot of things can power through USB now to this little port that'll just you know let you charge your base your rechargeable battery well that's I mean that's cool to recharge it but I mean what are you gonna do while it's charging oh wait we have this which is basically an L bracket for that uh, this is unpainted um, but it lets you go in here and then paint up here. So it is just designed utility. That is why it, it, they all come unpainted. No magnet. But it lets you charge it while it's sitting up for um, display if you would like. And you can obviously can paint it. Um, for me, my mindset is, hey, I finally have some base dungeon gray. If I want to try painting something, I have something that I don't have to pay for that I can test stuff out on. But um, as in general, I tend to... My goal with these is not display, but is to still use in builds. Um, it's fine. Give me a convenient way to charge it if I need. And now we will move on to the Elemental Trio Pledge. And you will uh, find here that each of these boxes has another one of these hero chargers and all of these... Um, stands so i'm not going to go over those each time but you'll notice that each of the main sculpts will accept these and the hero figure for each one will go on the charger so uh, showed them off with the dwarven because this is just each of the sets you know they each come with that and that each one <laughs> there, bitty, bitty, thank you notes now. <laughs> Why waste so much paper? 
So, this was the next set that I recall seeing. So this is different. Like, okay, so we still got magnets on the bottom, but this this is elemental. Like, so we got water here. Like, what is this? Isn't for a build, but I wanted to get all of them. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, you know what? It may not be for a build, but it could definitely be a add it with the mini thing. So you put a mini, a spell effect of something coming in, picking up a mini. Um, obviously, you can just lay mini in its grasp, um, and it's a cool water effect. So I'm like, I can still use this differently in my game, and it's just very pretty. The the paint. Kind of shifts from the, the blue more clear and it has the pearlescent look yeah. and then our column on this set does still hold all the things like normal but it doesn't look the same because it doesn't have that little bowl shape it's kind of open because it is a tornado of wind and earth um, you know, because they have three different sculpts. And so how do they get all four of the elements? Well, they combine them on, on one. Again, I don't I don't know at all what kind of effect this would be used for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I own it. <laughs> Obviously, can display dice on these two. That's what they're for, officially speaking. And then we have... Our, our hero piece, the big one. And it lights up. And it flickers with fire. And it is the phoenix. And th this can be like a, a boss battle. I, I said something like that. You know, sort of phoenix rising up. Like that is... Boss battle. And I, I, that moment right there just led me to think could also be someone empowered by you know thinking a la Jean Grey empowered by the Phoenix and just putting out that you know mini with this around it to sort of signify the power that you are battling against could be pretty cool and you know just having that light up mini it looks cool when it's not lit up too but um but yeah Big, fiery phoenix mini. Definitely less used in a build and more for having, like, a mini to battle. I think the elven set is the next one that I saw some of. Uh, this one includes an extra piece, and we'll see what that is here. It's a remote, obviously, but... We'll get to it. So, same pieces as all the others. Uh, there we go. Starting with, again, the quote unquote throne. Uh, these pieces are all based on the, like, elven style architecture that they did for the um, Wildlands ruins. Um,. The detail in here is so intricate. Um, so obviously thrones are not always designed for someone to be on the throne, although often they can. Um, but it's just sort of the general philosophy of wraps around. But this can just be whatever show showpiece for whatever, you know, you have of importance sitting there. We get our column. Um, and the columns all have like a spot on them that points a certain direction, you know, a certain direction. And uh, it it's for the solo tracker later on. But 
because these have multiple functions. But that's also in this unboxing because that's part of all the sculpts. <laughs> so we'll get there after we get out uh, past the five trios. But yeah, here's just sort of a column. So I didn't feel like I had to get like two of this column because this doesn't feel like a very flanking something column like the ram pillar did. Um, definitely more of just a hold something of importance up kind of column. And then we get to our final piece. Again, same recharging. Oh, that's that's a lot of light. That's a lot. Of, hold on. Oh, let's control it. What color do we want? Like blue. Maybe green? Yeah, blue. So that that is why we have the remote. So another large based piece here. Um, and this one has like, and I mean if you have something Make a queer dice up through here. Some light will shine up through the dice as well. All these are queer and they left a hole in the bottom so light can go up through it. But otherwise, we have here and... Well, I just try and get close so you can see the... Here's the size and scale of this detail. And like, they make a big deal about it on like, like how fine the detail is in some of these pieces when they're talking about them. But until you really get them in front of you, it's hard to appreciate how much detail is in there in such a small little piece. Um, but man, that's pretty. And it's really hazy which of these last two sets I saw first, but I'm going to start with Artificer. Of course, these last ones have larger boxes, it seems, because the pieces are in plastic. So, the duplicate pieces from all the sets. And then we get... A throne. Throne, mini for scale, magnet on the bottom. So this is bits of like pieced together metal, panels that look like dials, an asymmetrical build you can sort of see here, um, and weird control work. It's the artificer set. It looks like weird machinery. And it's, it's one of the reasons that I'm like, that I was like, I, I gotta get all of them. Because was, you know, at first I saw things like, I needed the Dwarven set. And then I kind of wanted the Phoenix from the Elemental set. And the Elven stuff looked cool, but I didn't have to have it, but I'd like it. And then I saw the Artificer set, and I'm just like, I gotta get everything. Because like, like, what is this? I don't know. But if I am doing a weird laboratory, it seems like a cool thing to be able to throw in and have as... Set dressing. <laughs> then we get to our column, which again, is that going to make some pretty awesome set dressing? We apparently just needed padding to not move around here. So look at this, look at this, look at this. So laying down the bottom. These can go on top. So there are these arms. Oh, let's get in a mini always for scale, because otherwise it is very hard to tell how big these things are. Um... I use this same mini. I um, forget what set it's from, but it's one of the ones that was, like, I think a common. It's pretty cheap when I saw it online, so I try and always use this same figure. <laughs> it's a general average height mini, but <laughs> if you want to get it yourself to give an idea, I try and use it for all my, all my scale work. Um, anyways, so we have this thing here, which has, like, oh, it's got, like, uh, a looking glass to look up. These arms look like they're like move up and down. We got this sort of 
pipe or tube connecting the lower and upper halves. Like you have this bowl here which can have a dice in it. But you can have other things in it too. Um, whatever little MacGuffin you put up there. And then you have these crystals. And well, yeah, this doesn't move up and down. It looks like it, like the arms would stretch out with the gears. And then it would go down like you can make them closer or further apart. For whatever arcane interaction is happening between those two crystals. Like, that is just a cool little set piece to help decorate a weird laboratory. And then we get our hero for the artificer set. It's a little foam bed. <laughs> Again, like these bases, like the small, like the normal ones and then the, the heroes are all bigger. Ooh. Oh, we see that. So this glows here blue and sort of blew out the front here and then this piece back here glows green and, and they kind of pulse um, and you got the kind of a tealish light coming up the top so yeah again scale perfect placement for your uber villain to give the villain speech. Um, see if I can little crank dial it. So obviously they're just pieces for, for sure. Oh, oh, by the way, giving a villain speech. There's a ladder on the back. I did not know that, but that would even justify how your villain can be up there giving the speech. There's a ladder on the back. Cause like, there's this little dial. Like there are things that are in scale to a mini on these things that are, they're just there to show off some dice. They don't have to do that. But they did, so you can get multiple uses out of it. There's a ladder up the back to justify how someone can either get whatever is up there up there, or climb up there to give their villain speech, or whatever it is. Um, you got these dials and buttons and glowing bits. And these weird arms that look like they can clamp in on whatever is up there if needed. Or So there's a uh, one more trio, and it is the Eldrick trio. Oh, and open says me. <laughs> Again, as always, so we get our throne. This is another set feels less architecture and more monster. But, um, like, there could be a reason that maybe someone is clasped in these hands. As we have weird round-toothed maws, silver eyes, random hands with tendrils and... Blech. But, uh, yeah, sort of our Eldritch Horror kind of idea. Weird monster. Then we get our column, which kind of looks like architecture. Looks like architecture that's being torn apart by these tentacles. This has weird um, sort of sigils and runes crafted on it and little tendrils with eyes and teeth. Reaching up, grasping around. And then finally, the hero. The uh, <laughs> glowing section up top. pulses at the front and around the whole sort of basket on the side which has again sort of like the uh, tower it has architectural elements to it but looking like these tendrils are reaching up and grasping around it 
Here's on the back. You can see they all kind of combine to the bottom part of this creature that has seven wings, and each wing has eyes on it. So, definite. Whether it's uh, Eldric Horror or the less uh, <laughs> the less artist traditional versions of Angel kind of thing. <laughs> There's a little carving in, into these metal bands. And that's, a, that's a big old piece. Here is another little set that is a very small set. But this is one of the ones that is very important. Filling space because of how little is in this little box. That's it. That's all we got. And, you know, these aren't necessarily the color that works best for everything, but if you need to fill that space it'll function it'll do just fine some things it will in fact work very well for to fill the top of a space some things not so much but on those you don't really need to fill the space <laughs> but if you want to fill the top of that column or maybe make the the chair throne look complete you can do that and there's a little pull accessory hole in here but they're just little plugs to fill up little spaces that you need to to fill up when using them not to hold dice but as parts of scenery so these little plugs were uh, useful and our final set has a very different little bit of art here almost like it's very much designed to be sold like on its own, like, like it, it is extra special, like the way that it is presented, like compared to normal. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. And it includes a die. Gotta be careful because it's a metal die. I have a nice table. It is a very pretty die. Okay. So the little shimmery bits. Look like their texture, but they are smooth. The number is a little proud of that smooth surface, but and uh, the corners are rounded, so it wouldn't do too much damage to the table. And in here we have this little piece here, which I guess whatever we have. These two options. So this set includes two pieces, but includes something here. Uh, this is a different cut top. So you don't have to use these for all of them because unlike the others that are just a round, this one has these flat parts on it so that, for example, the D6 that comes in it can just by default just sort of slot in there. Um, yeah, so it's another column, and it is distinctly shorter. Just say about the height of a mini. You got these little dragon that are on here. Of course, you could plug this one as well. Might be another decent one to work with the plugs. Yeah, you got the the dragons wrapping around it, and then you have this here. It's like I said, on all of these uh, columns, there's this one spot that kind of points to a certain area because this, uh, this. So we have this here. Okay, there is, uh, these numbers are actually slightly raised. There's a little texture to that. Um, but you get 1 through 20, then on the other side, 21 through 40. So, 
The idea being you can, you know, all these have had, remember, this same little bottom base here. And that's no accident. That is metal magnet 6-2 that has these ridges that line up with these ridges. So click, click, click. You can click, and the reason all the other ones had the the, say, the little marker is because if you'd rather use one of the others, click, click, click. So whichever one you want to use for keeping track of whatever you're keeping track of here, you can. And it's decorative on the edges. Like this is one that I'm like I. It's not. It would not be an easy one to incorporate into a build. Um, although perhaps with the artificer, uh, which has its marker here, a little diamond there. Um, you know, it can be doing like a countdown, <laughs> and every turn it counts down, and players are trying to solve the problem before whatever explodes. There's also this with it, which has the same little thing for you to, although it doesn't really matter, it's not pointing at anything in particular, but it is a little piece that it locks into magnetically, and just um, has this little smooth spot. That smooth spot is for these stickers. Two little rows of stickers, rage, hit points, ammunition, key points, inspiration, superiority, wild shape, uh, psionic energy, sorcery points, channel divinity, hit dice, uh, levels one through nine for spell levels, and then a few blank ones that say you can keep track of. You have three, oh, sorry, if I face it forward with the arrow forward, then it <laughs> wants to sit where the number faces up. Um, but you know, you have three first level slots, and you can change it to two, then one, and then remove it when you're out. So you can use these little markers to keep track of how many of a thing you have left. And obviously with the little inserts here, if you need to get a different dice to go higher than six, you can. And so, yeah. <laughs> so that, that is quite a bit. Um, but again, that is all of the new sculpted pieces that came in the Reliquaries line. Um, as well as, because of the way the sets are set up, you get the little things to store dice in them. Um, and the, uh, hero chargers for each of the hero pieces. So if you want to have a little dock station where you plug in all your USB ports and you just have five of these lined up in a row to be able to charge each of your, you know, hero pieces because you're going to use all five of them at once, you can. Again, they're designed for storing dice, but that is not my mindset. I do not intend to store dice in them. Um... I have very few fancy dice. This little metal one now included. I have a lot of very pretty dice that I like, but not like want to show off store. I mean, I just, you know, keep my dice in the little boxes they come in, or I have little drawers of the, you know, they're, they're fun and they're pretty, but like, I have few that are like showpiece dice. Um, <laughs> so, that's not really where my mindset is, but I'm like, the, the Dwarven pieces I saw immediately. I was like, that is an awesome piece for build. And when I saw the artificer pieces, those two were like, those were must have for just having build options. Um, then beyond that, the elven ones were very pretty. I was like, I can definitely, especially with little bits of the architecture from Wildlands, which I have a few pieces, um, not much of, that said, you know, it's like, oh, this can definitely supplement that, and some of the detail in here was great. Um, 
the Phoenix was definitely a... Man, do I want that for having a <laughs> cool enemy. Um, and then, again, a spell effect with the water. I uh, wasn't so sure what to do with the Earth and Air Tornado, but whatever. Um, and then the Elder Core, I'm like, I can find things for that. I don't know what it is yet, but again, probably more monsterish kind of things. Um, so yeah, we got we got some cool options for, for it, but I, I was just like, let's have it so I have all the sculpts. Um, when they did the Kickstarter, they're like, we're not sure if or what we're going to be able to reprint. It depends on popularity. So I made sure that I had one of everything. Um, and it should, it's all up in the Dwarven Forge store right now. They haven't, like, released it where you can place your orders. But if you are interested, go check it out. Because whenever they do release it, um, you know, that, that will be your chance. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'll link down to Dwarven Forge's website. So you can check it out there. Thank you for watching. Like, comment. Subscribe if, you, if you're not. And thank you for watching. Bye.